Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. I'm betting that this is the video you've either been super excited for, pumped for, or the exact opposite, this is what you've been despising. So my goal here is to make this exciting because object-oriented programming is a huge piece of C++ and programming in general. So this video is gonna be all about the introduction to object-oriented programming, and this is what we're gonna be talking about in basically the next huge section of this series because it's a pretty big topic and it's essential, vitally important. So pay attention and try to have a little bit of fun. Now first, you know what's really fun? That's right, watching my sponsored ads and clicking and checking out their website. Link in the description for Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So if you have ever programmed in C, you probably know that it's kind of terrible, but that's besides the point is very cumbersome to develop in C. In C programming, there is no real concept of classes or object-oriented programming. Now they do have something known as structs, which kind of is a big piece of object-oriented programming in C++, similar concept in nature, and that definitely made C programming a little bit more doable. <laughs> But for large scale applications, it definitely helps to have a more structured object oriented programming concept inside of a programming language, which C did not have and C++ introduced. And it really set the foundation for a lot of the other programming languages, Java, C Sharp, and basically all the C-like programming languages all have the object-oriented programming component in them. So learning this stuff is not just for C++, it's for everything. But the way you do it in C++ is definitely a little bit different than the way you would do it in C Sharp or Java. So we're going to get into the specifics of C++ object-oriented programming. It's not just gonna be general concepts that you could apply to anything. We're gonna get really specific. So I'm excited, hope you guys are as well. So there's a lot of info about object-oriented programming, but I think one of the big struggles people have with it is the why. Why do you need object-oriented programming? And that's one of my big goals that I hope to basically explain to you guys. But first, before we get into the why, let's talk about the what. Object-oriented programming is based on the concept of classes and objects. Here we have a class, and we define a class in code. It basically defines a structure. It's the blueprint. It's the cookie cutter. And we can use that cookie cutter to make many instances, and these instances are known as objects, like so. So class is used to define an object. This is the structure. Think of this being like a user and each object being a specific user. So we might have Caleb, Amy, and Sally, or whatever the names are, it doesn't really matter, just users. <laughs> now, why do we structure things this way? Well, because most applications we do are built around data. And data is a very general term that can mean anything, but usually our applications are data-driven applications. So we basically can describe data or real life things using objects. If someone creates a, an account on our application or creates a user, then we can describe that as an object. It's basically a way to group information and keep things organized. So within one user, we can have the person's name, their email, and so forth, but it's all grouped within one object so it stays nice and organized. Another way you can think about object-oriented programming is a table. So no, not like a dinner table, we're talking like an Excel table or a database table. Usually we have columns. So we might have a column for their ID, their first name, and their last name. Well, these column headers, you can consider them to be the class. It defines the structure. And then each individual row is like an object. So this person might have the ID of seven, have the name Caleb, last name Curry and then some other information. Here is one object. We can have another object with the ID of eight. This person can be Amy, last name White, and so forth. So once again, the columns are like the class defines the structure, and every time we create a new user, a new object, it's like adding a row. 
Now this might be a weird way to think about it, but that definitely helps me because I have a strong database background if you've watched any other of my videos. So if you've watched my database videos, maybe this is helpful for you guys. Or you might just wanna go back to the cookie cutter example where a class is a cookie cutter and every single cookie we make with that cookie cutter is an object. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna talk about some of the basic concepts of OOP, object-oriented programming, before we dive into each one in, in individual videos. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is structs. Structs are very similar to classes, especially in C++, they're almost identical, but by convention, structs are used for smaller things, maybe coordinates that have an X and a Y, or a small piece of data where classes are reserved for much larger things. So that's just a convention, but you can do it however you want. Once you understand structs, understanding classes is super easy and vice versa. If you learn classes first, learning structs is very, very easy. 15 seconds max, it's almost identical. Other programming languages, that's not entirely, gross. Other programming languages, that's not entirely the case where Onyx, quit gagging. Other programming languages, that might not be the case. Oh my gosh, I'm so annoyed. Are you okay? Other programming languages, that might not be the case. Gosh dang it. Other programming languages, that might not be the case. There might be a larger distinction between classes and structs, and that's fine. We're in C++, so I don't know why I keep talking about all these other languages, but it is helpful to know. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is members of classes, which includes basically data members, which is like variables inside of a class, methods, and constructors, which we talked briefly about when we were talking about functions and methods in a couple videos ago. Then we're going to dive into encapsulation, which is one of the three big pieces of object-oriented programming. It's basically where we can hide the inner details of a class and just have basically a public interface for how to interact with this class, or more appropriately, any instance of the class, how to work with an object. Again, this will all be cleared up once we go into this in more detail. I just wanna give you guys the overview if you have any OOP experience and you just wanna know what we're gonna be talking about. Next thing, we're gonna talk about inheritance, which is where classes can inherit from other classes. And then lastly, we'll touch on polymorphism, where classes can be kind of interpreted as other classes, their parent classes. So that will be really cool, lots of useful stuff. And that'll basically cover all the main pieces of object-oriented programming at least in the, the big side of things. And we'll get into some other stuff, but we're not going to super duper deep dive. This is just to get you started with object-oriented programming. We'll build some classes, build some objects, talk about inheritance, and we'll even get into some cooler stuff like operator overloading, friend functions probably, and some other stuff. So stay focused and stick with this content because it's gonna get pretty cool. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Please be sure to subscribe and peace out. Check out the next video.